This is Living on the Edge. The threatening volcano, Mount Tavavir, looms over poor old Rebel. Anyone who tries to get the better of this mountain is simply wasting their time. But it's not the only destructive force here. In a country with a reputation for lawlessness, this town has its share of crime and chaos. But Rebel's approach to law enforcement is unique. Local business people have got together to take crime fighting into their own hands. My name is Bruce Alexander. I'm the owner manager of the Rebel Hotel, Rebel, Papua New Guinea. Good morning. Hello. How are you doing? Good, thanks. My name is Bruce. The high unemployment mixed with uh, squatters, that is people from other areas, and also the drugs that they bring in, and that's what's causing the real problems here. I am Fidel Matubal. I'm the manager of uh, Wolkona Town Service Station in Rabaul. I think the main problem here is rascal activities, breaking and enters and robbers in the business houses in Rabaul Town. Hey, come on, boys, hey, time, time, you need a little discharge out here. Come on, let's get these pallets loaded. I'm Adam Butler. I'm the shipping operations manager for Agmark here in Rebel. Uh, we were hearing of people being stabbed in the streets, mainly at night, and uh, stores and homes getting broken into. There's hardly a business here that hasn't been hit by the so-called rascal gangs, and hardly a resident who hasn't been a victim of crime. But in this town, they don't expect much of their police force. There's not much action here at Rebel Central Police Station. For much of the time, the patrol cars sit idle. Station Sergeant Andrew Menham told me the limited fuel ration to the police is used mainly to ferry officers to and from work. Most of the time we run out of diesel. We, we don't have um, end cup. Uh, sometimes we don't have stationaries to do our uh, court papers. And how about this for a holding cell? We're actually in the police foyer. Padlocks, one, two, three, and chains, all set for an overnight stay. Donors have supplied just about everything else here, from computers to air conditioners. Police have little money, low morale, and not much energy. They've thrown in the towel. It's a serious issue. They don't really give a damn anymore. The business people in this town have backup power supplies and backup water. And this is their backup law enforcement. They've joined up as reservists in the Royal Papua New Guinea Police Force. We've got a number of firearms, mostly 12 gauge and, and uh, various pistols, 9mm and 40 caliber pistols. After one week's training a few months ago, the reservists have the same clout as any other police officer in town. But the end of a business day signals the start of a long working night for these volunteer guardians of law and order. I think everyone's aware the situation sort of deteriorated a wee bit with the law and order in town. <laughs> Our shipping line boss, Adam Butler, has some intelligence on some rascals. Uh, we also got Kenny. Kenny's out there as well. He's another murderer that we're after. Uh, so keep an eye out for him. And hotel manager Bruce Alexander is on the trail of a rapist. Uh, but, uh, but there are witnesses to say that he had a knife to this young girl's neck and then dragged her off into the bushes. So. I think they're residing somewhere at uh, Balagun. Service station owner Fidelma Tabul has put her three kids to bed and is out on patrol too. But they don't stay in one place, they just move on. 
We'll get in the harbor on the way back. See if we can stir up there. Kenny will be foolish, you watch. He'll get drunk again like he did and hopefully this time... Uh, yeah. You believe right, huh? Finish work, that's all of them. It's 8 p.m. and the only people here after dark are drinkers. It's illegal to drink alcohol in public, but the reservists are prepared to give these offenders a warning. Okay, okay. catch that in, that's all. Okay. What's more worrying are the sometimes deadly home brews being traded on the roadside. Ah! Yeah, very dangerous. There's people, a lot of people in their hospitals now that have got bush knife wounds and arms chopped off and all the other bits and pieces and the, and just, just about always that fellow's been on jungle juice. Well, maybe I'm a mass trivial and you're not going to love mass because you spark finish that long, long yet. <laughs> It's 10 p.m. and there's still no sign of the rapist or Kenny the murderer. But the reservists have handcuffed a 16-year-old boy. They'd nearly run over him as he slipped in the middle of the road. Bruce, why do they sleep on the road? Uh, it's warmer, they reckon. And they get full of JJ and they don't know where they're sleeping. Do you know what? There's probably uh, 10 fellas die a year from that. Wait, you wait, Jack. Yeah, boys. Yeah, boys. That's a nice Oh, pretty nice. At midnight, the evening livens up. Hey! Let me knock it out of you! Ha! Let me knock it out of A culprit has fled, but left behind drugs he was selling. These fellas have got to be fast round the back, Joe. They're being far too slow tonight. I don't know what's their problem. It's about a hundred packets of marijuana. I'm enough police. 2 a.m. and the search for Kenny the murderer and the rapist continues in some abandoned houses. Still, no sign of them. We've taken out in the last six months just about all the top ten criminals in Rabaul. We've all we've either captured them or they've run away, and that's uh, calmed the situation down a lot. Oh, there you go. Huh? I've just pushed this up here. That looks still fairly solid, actually. But there's little joy for Bruce after this night. While he was out chasing the criminals, they broke into his hotel. Well, it looks like they've got a whole heap of sheets and bowls and maybe a few fireworks. And yeah, but they've probably propped it up. I think most police officers throughout the world probably enjoy a collar, like catching bad fellows, and we certainly do. But we like to think that those, those people that are predating on us are now being predated back, so and we'll chase them hither and thither and we'll catch them. That's our policy. We're very committed to it. Baby station, everything else works. Okay, have a good journey. Back at Rebel Central Police Station, it's still all very quiet. But something is happening out the back. Local businesses have chipped in to build a holding cell. Now all the volcano town needs are some apprehended rascals to make it all worthwhile.